Let me talk about an annual tradition. It takes place this time every year and comes in two phases. It starts with a toxic cloud that shrouds the Indian capital and is followed by a smog of complacency that pervades Indian politics. I'm talking about Delhi's annual air pollution crisis. The air quality index in the Indian capital breached the 900 mark this weekend and the smog may have gone, but the, pe the petty politics has not stopped. Every politician in India wants to project himself as the man saving our lungs. It's surprising and insulting because in the politics of fighting pollution, everybody is guilty. Let's take this one at a time, starting with the facts. Why does New Delhi fail the air test every year? A suffocating brown smog engulfs the city and shows no sign of shifting for days. The courts may upset people by restricting Diwali firecrackers and the politicians will threaten draconian laws like banning cars. But in reality, they're not the only culprits. A lot is to blame. Number one, it's the season of burning crop residue in the states of Punjab and Haryana near Delhi. The farmers say they do not have a choice but to clear their fields for the next crop. And they say that despite government subsidies, the machinery to convert their waste into fertilizer is too expensive. They don't have a choice. They must burn their crop residue. Second, the weather is to blame, and this is a little technical. As it gets colder, the particulate matter in the air gets trapped at the ambient level. This is partly due to negligible wind and partly due to crop burning. And then, of course, the festivities. Beyond the light, firecrackers also add to fume and smoke in Delhi's already toxic air. Like every year, Delhiites tried this time too, but then there were some who vehemently disagree with the notion of a firecracker ban. This brings us to the reactions. What are the people saying? Delhiites want their weekend, in fact, spend their weekend desperately searching for a clear sky, even online. Concerned parents shared how their kids have to bear the burden of breathing. And why not? The toxic air is making children susceptible to respiratory disease. Imagine being a child and spending your Sunday locked inside. Which brings us to the politicians. What are they doing about this? Nothing. They're missing in action and they're dishing out incredible advice. Eat carrots, they say. I'm not kidding. Let me show you some tweets that some of our politicians put out. Ministers, the Environment, and Min Environment Minister of India was sharing music compositions. He was advising people to start their day with music. Why not? His colleague, the Minister of, for Health, was making a case for vegetables on his Twitter handle. The pollution levels hit a three-year high in Delhi and he shared some tips to tackle this. Eat enough broccoli and carrots. I have no words for this. What about the judiciary? What are the courts saying? The Supreme Court of India pulled up both the state governments and the centre. It questioned the Delhi government's odd even scheme. The court had a very important question. What really has the Arvind Kejriwal government achieved by odd and even? Fewer cars, fewer private cars, only mean more taxis and autos and they're equally polluting. So what's the point of this? And lastly, what is the world saying? Delhi's sky has become the source of its stigma. It dominated international headlines. It was the lead story in several global newspapers. And it's the same story playing out the same way year after year. Polluters defending their right to pollute, politicians blaming each other, or worse still, guilt-tripping people. Don't burst crackers, they say. Don't drive to work. Don't complain because you pollute. Yes, people have to be a part of the solution, but the government which taxes people, which preaches people, has to do its bit. There is no dearth of ways to do this. They must find a will. Making people breathe poison is worse than terrorism.